So the title for the section in your textbook is two-step equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm not only going to talk about two-step equations, I'm going to go all the way through with multi-step equations. Okay? And we're going to come up with a general set of rules for basically solving any single variable equation. And the overall emphasis on solving equations is the same thing that I told you guys last week. We want to perform inverse operations. Basically, what I want to do is I want to undo what is being done to x. So I'm going to write down a messy equation, okay, that's going to show you the roughest type of thing that we're going to have to undo, basically, for the beginning of this thing. And I'm going to show you, following order of operations, what it means to do the thing to X, and we're going to figure out how to undo it, and then we're going to basically come up with some steps. That is um, an equation, and if I want to solve that equation, I need to get x by itself. But what we're going to do now is we are going to pretend that it's not an equation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that the equal sign in zero does not exist, and we're going to just talk about what it means for order of operations here. Pretend equals zero does not exist. So for order of operations, if I were to give you the number, so if I'm covering up the equals zero, if I was to give you the number five to put in for X, I would start out with X, and then the first thing that I'm gonna be doing to X is subtracting four. Order of operations, do that thing in the parentheses first. So that would give me X minus four. Once I get whatever that X minus four number is, I'm gonna take that answer and I'm gonna multiply it by three, which gives me the three times X minus four. Once I get whatever number that is, I am going to add seven to it. And that's gonna give me three times X minus four plus seven. Well, that is the order of operations when I'm evaluating something. When I want to solve for an equation, what I need to do is I need to perform the steps, subtracting four, multiplying by three, and adding seven. I need to perform their inverse operations in reverse order. So if I start here, to go from here to here, working backwards, I would subtract seven. Going from here to here, working backwards, I would divide by three. And going from here to here, working backwards, I would be adding four. So the process that we are going to be doing is just performing in inverse operations to undo what's happening to X. I wish you guys were in the classroom because I like to cover up stuff on the board with my hand and you can't see me covering up the stuff with my hand. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually solve the equation doing these three steps in the order that I've listed, one, two, and three. So three X minus four plus seven equals zero. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract seven. I'm subtracting seven from both sides. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by three. The 
The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add four. With the exception of the fraction stuff that I didn't talk about, all I did was do the inverse operations to undo things. So that's the overall idea of what we're going to be doing for the next few class days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with a list of steps that you should consider. There is no one way to do every single problem, but I'm going to come up with a list of steps that you should consider most of the time in order. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about that we want to do is we want to distribute um, distributing will always work. But it may not be the most efficient. I'm going to go back to the previous page and talk talk what I mean about this. I'm going to rewrite the equation: three times x minus four plus seven equals zero. To distribute, that means multiplying each thing that's inside the parentheses by the number that's outside. Did I do the work wrong? I did do the work wrong over here. This was a minus 7 thirds. You dropped should, the negative. Yeah, that should have been a minus, and that should have been a 5 thirds. And nobody told me that in chat. But yeah, I, I noticed it when I was looking at this other problem. Okay, so the distri distribution works. Okay, and then, um, but it may not be the most efficient. Uh, for those that don't like fractions until the very end, that it will be the best thing for you. But there are some times that I can keep that three there do the work like I did it this first way, just doing inverse operations and not have to distribute. It's for you to realize when dis distributing is gonna be, make it a lot less efficient. Once I distribute, my next step is to combine like terms. And what do I mean by like terms? A like terms have the same variables to the same powers. Okay, um, for example, x, 3x, 17 million X are like terms. 17 AB, 13 AB, and six negative 16 AB are like terms. So these are yes. This is yes. 4X squared, negative 10X squared are like terms. But 4x squared and negative 5x are not like terms because the x's are not to the same power. So the things I'm going to combine for like terms in this equation is I'm going to combine these two things. So negative 12 plus 7 is negative 5. I'm going to write that back in green. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is I want to move 
all numbers to one side and all, I'm going to call it X's to the other side. This step is only with addition or subtraction. Okay, this equation that I wanted to solve, I only have all well, my x's are already on one side, so I don't have to move anything. But I need to move that five to the other side. Okay, and I'm going to put this constant numbers. So that negative five, I need to move it to the other side. Well, I'm going to move it by adding or subtracting. Well, to undo subtracting five, I'm going to add five to both sides. So I have three X minus five equals zero. I add five and I get three X equals five. And my last step here, I'm going to go back to this slide, this previous slide. I want to, for the last step, I want um, use multiplication or division. to get a one in front of the X. So right now I'm multiplying by three, so I'm gonna divide by three. Or another way to think about it is I'm gonna multiply by one third. So my last step, um, we're gonna call this isolate. We're going to isolate by multiplying and dividing. No addition and subtraction happening here. So I start out with 3x equals 5. I'm just going to divide both sides by 3. And I get x equals 5 thirds. So I'm going to go back to the previous slide, make sure people have enough time to write down the steps. We are. These are the letters I use, distribute, combine, move, and isolate. Um, so when you hear me talk about what we're doing in class, in each step of the sample problems I'm going to be doing, those letters represent the words that I'm talking about. We distribute, we combine, we move, and then we isolate. One thing I want to tell you is that any chance that you have to combine like terms on the same side of an equation, that combine is always, you can do that over and over and over again. You may end up having to do it multiple times to solve a problem. So I'm going to give you another minute or so on this page. Good job there, Gracie. Thank you. So I will not see you at the library. Um, And we'll talk, uh, the one that needs the vocab, we'll talk after class. So we'll give you some time to make sure that's copied down. Then I'm going to, all I'm going to do now for the next uh, probably 10 minutes is example problems. And then we're going to have break up into some class discussions on things while you guys are working on homework. that path, see some bodies. I think I saw, let it go. We are letting go. And then, okay. Does anybody need more time for the first one? 
No. No, uh, don't say no. I'm waiting. I'm looking for yeses before I turn it. Because you're not everybody. So going once, going twice. And the last step is my isolate step. Give a few more seconds here, and then I'm just burning through examples. Okay, examples. I'm gonna start off fairly easy and then they're gonna pick up in funness. So those are the first four before I get into anything really messy. So we distribute, we combine, we move, we isolate. The first two represent the kind you're doing on the homework today. They are called two-step equations. The first step is always going to be an adding and subtracting step. The second step is always going to be a multiplying and dividing step. Grouping symbols, exponents and roots. Multiplication and division, addition and subtraction. My order of operations I just listed. When we are solving, so if we evaluate, we go from the top down. Evaluate means we stick a number in for the variable. If I am solving for a variable, we go from the bottom up. And then distribute is part of that in there. Okay, so distribute nothing, combine nothing, move by adding or subtracting. Subtract seven from both sides. Isolate by multiplying or dividing. Divide by three. What I just showed you is uh, halfway in between the maximum amount of work that's required and the minimum amount of work that's required. What I'm gonna do now in blue is I'm gonna show you what work I need to see at a minimum. I know I have to subtract seven, so I'm gonna do the subtraction in my head. I know I have to divide by three, so I'm gonna do the division in my head. The blue represents the minimum amount of work I need to see to get a full credit answer. If you need to show the subtraction and the division, go ahead and do that. That is a tool for you that I am not going to require for the, these homework assignments moving forward. The last homework assignment, you actually had to tell me which mathematical properties you needed for those. Okay, so that's the minimal amount of work. I am going to continue showing you probably for the next week or so what I'm doing to both sides as well as speaking the words. But by December, I will speak the words and be giving you this blue stuff for your answers. Okay, we're trying to build our mathematical skills up. Second, uh, second equation, no distribution, no combining like terms. I need to move by adding or subtracting. 
I am going to move by subtracting the 13, which is four equals W over five. I'm gonna isolate that W by multiplying or dividing. Right now I'm dividing by five, so I am gonna multiply by five. And if I multiply that side by five, I get that one. That tells me W is 20. So the next ones, I gotta do a little bit more work. The work is similar to these next two. Step number one is distribute. And here's where we gotta be careful distributing. I have to take that whole negative four times each term, okay? A lot of students at the middle school and algebra one level, when they go to distribute there, they forget that that negative four applies to everything. So they, they'll write the negative sign down, but then they'll write four X and then they'll write the minus 12, which is gonna be wrong. So when I distribute, I copy everything I did not distribute. And then I do my distribution work. Negative four times X is negative four X. Negative four times a negative three is a positive 12. Then I combine like terms. The like terms I have are my X's. Five X minus four X is one X. Then I move, I move all my letters to one side, all my numbers to the other side. I'm gonna move my numbers by subtracting 12. And I get X equals five. And in this case, there was no number left for me to multiply or divide by. The way you can check your answer is plugging these numbers back into the equation. Five minus three is two. Okay, five times five is 25. Right now I've got 25 minus four times two. That's eight. 25 minus eight, that's 17. Does 17 equal 17? Yes, it does. So there is a way to check to see if you did get your correct answer. Next one before I give us some fractions. Combine, uh, distribute. I'm multiplying every term by a positive three. I copy what I did not distribute. And I go positive three times X is a positive three X. A positive three times a positive four is a positive 12. I combine like terms. The two X and the three X combine, that gives me five X plus 12 equals 27. I move the 12 over by subtracting. It tells me 5x is 15. I isolate the x by dividing by 5, and I get x equals 3. Does anybody have any question on these first four examples? The next one I'm gonna do is one where you can distribute right off the bat, but it doesn't make sense to distribute right off the bat. I'm gonna do it two different ways. I'm gonna do it the distribution way, then I'm gonna do it, Mr. Taylor actually thinks and looks at the problem before he does you know, a pure step-by-step -step process so we can do it easier. And the equation I want to solve is, I'm gonna do this one in red. I wanna do three halves, three X plus five is equal to negative 24. Again, I'm gonna do it twice. I'm gonna do three halves, three X plus five is equal to negative 24. 
First way I'm going to do is for those of you that if I write down distribute, combine, move, and isolate, and that's the only way you can do it, this is what you're going to get. This is, this is, I'm trying to teach you reasoning with this problem. If I multiply this across to these two terms, I get 9x over 2 plus 15 halves. Distribute step went fine. Next thing I need to do is I need to move. There is no combining like terms. Next thing I need to move is the 15 halves. I'm going to do that by subtracting 15 halves. So that would be negative 63 halves. And then my last step is to multiply or divide to get rid of the number in front of the x. I can do this all in one step. Well, to get rid of the dividing by 2, I multiply by 2. To get rid of the multiplying by 9, I divide by 9. If I do it to that side, I do the same thing to this side. And then what I can do is a little bit of reasoning here. Those twos cancel. 9 goes into 9 once. 9 goes into negative 63 seven times. And I get x equals negative 7. Two things there. One, I was dealing with fractions throughout the entire problem. And two, a lot of you are still at the point where you would have done negative 126 eighteenths, and you would have forced yourself to go to a calculator to figure out what that is instead of being able to simplify before you multiply your fractions together. So if you just follow the basic steps, distribute, combine, move, and isolate, you can end up with a big honking mess. Here's what I realize. And the reason why I'm not going to distribute is I see this two down here. If I were to distribute, this is an odd number and this is an odd number. I know I am guaranteed to end up with fractions at this point if I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to get rid of this. Anytime I have a pure multiplication problem, I've got this times this whole thing, I can get rid of one of those terms by the multiplication step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that three halves by multiplying by two thirds. I don't need the parentheses anymore. Negative 24 divided by 3 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. And then I'm back to my move and isolate step. My move is to subtract 5. Then my isolate is to divide by 3. Get x equals negative 7. The work on the right to me is cleaner, but if you can still get the same answer if you do the work on the left. So I wanted to show you a problem where to me it doesn't make sense to distribute first. And for our Last wonderful examples. Yep, I got a couple more minutes. We are going to do this. These are my last two problems. And I do not know why that's giving me a Uber over here. Let me try to put the X back there. There we go. So these will be the last two examples I did.
I distribute on the left, nothing to distribute. Combining, there's nothing to combine. I can't combine because I don't have the, on the same side of the equation, I don't have any like terms. So they have to be on the same side to combine. My next step is the move step. The move step says to move all of the letters to one side, all of the constant terms to the other. So I'm gonna make a little quick note here. Move the letters to the side with most of them, with the greatest quantity. I could move my X's either to the left or the right, but 10 X is bigger than eight X. So I'm gonna move everything to the 10 X side. So I'm gonna move my letters by subtracting eight X from both sides. I'm gonna copy the, I'm just copying what I had before. I'm gonna subtract eight X from both sides. If I move my letters to the left, that means I have to move my numbers to the right. The number I want to move is this one, the 18X. I want to move it over to the right. So to move it, I have to subtract 18X from, 18 from both sides. 10X minus 8X is 2X. Any number minus itself is zero. Any number minus itself is zero. Four minus 18 is negative 14. So I did my move step, and then my next step is the isolate by multiplying or dividing. Divide by two. So on the move step, you want to move the letters to the side that's got the most of them. And the last example, our standard stuff is distribute, combine, move, and isolate. I showed you a problem with distributing. If I multiplied by a fraction, I was gonna get fractions. But in this case, I'm not gonna get fractions because the two numbers that are in the parentheses are both divisible by the bottom number of my fraction. So I'm gonna, if I distribute, I'm actually gonna end up with integers in this case. And here I wanna distribute on both sides of my equation. 5 times x, 5x. Five, 5 times 2, 10. 3 fifths. I'm going to get my highlighter thing out. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6, and I get 6 times x. Are there any questions on the distribution of the 3 fifths? If so, put that in chat, and I'll, I'll write it all out. Okay, I'm going to continue. I want to move my X's to the side that has the most of them. So this is my distribute step. There is nothing to combine. My movement step is to move the X's to the side that has the most. 6X is the most. So I want to move these that direction. If I'm moving my X's to the left, I mean, onto the right, I'm going to move my numbers to the left. And until you get into a good habit of doing these problems and getting them correct all of the time, put those arrows on there so you know what you're doing. Oh, if I'm moving it that way, I have to subtract them to get rid of them. That three, I have to subtract them to get rid of them. And you have to do the same mathematical operations on both sides of the equation. Any number minus itself is zero. 10 minus three is seven. 6x minus 5x is 1x, and we're done. I'm going to stop the recording.
Uh, don't quickly call. 